the other uh, accessories needs to be changed and those kind of developments are needed those kind of research are needed research in terms of in terms of material uh, research in terms of technologies uh, because it started with sla and we are handling all sorts of material and all sorts of machines now so those are the researches which gives a direction to think to do the risk uh, risk analysis so when we try to adopt or look into the technology those are the ones uh, you know becomes a guidelines you know so yeah Great. Well, thank you for that, Vinaya. Thanks for your insightful uh, discussion today and sharing your insights and, I guess, um, exposure to looking at how all these factors are influencing AM adoption, I guess, at the local level and across the world and even at an industry level. Um, and thank you for, for your presentation. You. So up next... Thank you, Kevin. No worries. Up next, we're going to have uh, Dr. Diana Tartakowska. I hope I'm pronouncing that right and apologies if I am not. Going to be able to bring you up on screen as a presenter. So um, feel free to turn your camera on um, and start sharing your screen shortly. Wow. Okay. So can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome. This is good. I'll start with Hi. a little introduction for you if you like. Um, so Diana is an independent expert in the field of quality management and material science with over 20 years experience. She works with numerous international industry partners as a consultant, researcher, trainer, and auditor. The key issues of Diana's work base are on good manufacturing and documentation practice, selecting the right quality management tools for company and industry needs, and as well as resolving issues that limit quality management and performance. So for over 20 years, Diana has been a lecturer in polymer science, focusing on polymer properties and manufacturing as well as recycling and quality management at a different German and international, at different German and international universities and two of academy. Diana holds a PhD in material science um, from Technical University Berlin and specializes in polymers and material science and manufacturing. Um, today, Diana's presentation is titled Stop and Go, Medical Device Regulations, Quality Assurance and Patients' Needs, uh, 3D Printing and MedTech. So over to you, Diana, and where are you joining us from today? Just um, a little bit high up. I was just, I didn't sleep. I just tell you, I didn't sleep at six o'clock in the morning in Berlin. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. Diana's joining us from happy. Berlin. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Just hello from Berlin for very cold Berlin. So, but I hope, uh, another 30 minutes and then maybe I can go sleep. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So. I know Diana's been working with a lot of international groups lately, so her sleep schedule has been um, quite flexible and agile. All right, exactly. let's try and so bring up your was, screen. So I tried to share my... Um, yeah, so go share um, and it should give well, you a couple of options for sharing a screen or a specific one. What about this? I see something starting to pop up. Wonderful. Yes, I'm going to turn my mic and camera off. Over to you, Diana. So I hope it it, it works, and I hope it, uh, the internet in in Berlin is still working because sometimes it's not. So, hello everyone. Good morning or good afternoon. Good evening. Uh, as as you wish, uh, let's say so, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk uh, on that conference. So, um, I mean, after you already attend a lot of very beautiful lectures for sure, uh, a lot of very beautiful uh, presentation, beautiful design, seeing a lot of possibilities to implement all the vision of um, additive manufacturing, I will take you to into other side of our reality. So welcome in the world of regulatory. So um, it's maybe not the most exciting uh, subject, but still very, very important. And it's um, 
every time it's very hard to talk about this uh, legal issues or regulation and everything what nobody wants uh, to hear, but we have to, let's say. So um, my small agenda, something about medical device regulation requirements, classification, and of course, all the obligation for the manufacturers and how the law regulates 3D printing in Europe. So um, this is more or less the points. I try to um, explain you so much as possible in the short time. I uh, unfortunately can speak five hours without a break um, about the subject uh, in general, because this is such a big, really big subject. So but it's uh, still not so easy to talk about this after the interesting point of, of uh, um, additive manufacturing. So um, why, why I choose the subject? Just because um, um, I switch one day, I switch to the other side. It means uh, from the material science just to switch to quality assurance and quality management. I didn't want, but I done. And uh, since 20 years, more or less, um, I have um, uh, a lot of customers and a lot of companies as, as a consultant, and I see how many problems do we have, uh, or everyone has, uh, let's say, who is uh, confrontating with the subject. Yeah? Because um, from the one side, uh, we see a lot of um, needs, a lot of vision, a lot of designs, possibilities. And from other side, um, the regulation are coming. Yeah. So, and uh, the question is always, do we need this? Uh, why we do this? Uh, may we just um, make the parts, make uh, some, some uh, devices? Mm, it's not so it's not so easy i would say yeah so it's not enough just to have an idea it's just not enough to to get this idea also in real we have to regulate this uh, this subject unfortunately so and um, the use of 3d printing in the medical inter industry is revolutionary and huge and we know Might just jump on in here. I think we're having some technical issues with Diana's internet connection currently. Um, just bear with us. All right, just bear with us. I think uh, the internet connection for Diana has been interrupted. I'm just going to send her a message so we can bring her back up on the stage. Okay, just bear with us. Diana is hopefully going to have her internet issues resolved. We'll be back and joining us quite shortly. That'd be a good chance to go have a little bit of a bio break and get yourself a cup of tea or a coffee just while we reconnect her um, if you would like to. Or you can always jump over to one of our other tracks. So there's the technology, um, the people in the economics track, 
because there's some other great speakers going on in those tracks as well, just while we wait for Diana to come on back. back on stage she does have some mic and cam issues happening right now um so we'll keep an eye on her um and welcome her back soon um in the interim i actually here's some i've got some little pieces that i've prepared earlier well i haven't but i thought it might be good to share with everyone what's happening in the australian industry for additive manufacturing as diana comes back on stage so um in july last year managed to um Head on over to Sydney to present at a conference hey, recently. Yeah. If you're showing parts, can you um, stop sharing the screen so we can see them? Oh, that's a good point. I can definitely <laughs> do that. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> so what we have, um, and I think this is really fitting for, uh, uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. I don't know if you guys can see this. We've got, we've got Dinah's screen back, which is great. But um, this is a 3D printed Sydney Opera House. So obviously I'm coming to you um, from Melbourne in Australia. But I thought that this was just like a really cool little Aussie thing. So Roma uh, Engineering actually printed this one in their Sydney location. And this is this one has like a nice little place in my heart because obviously I use this to communicate with a lot of um, students uh, coming through, like from the Australian National Youth Science Forum um, and others who want to get into additive manufacturing to just show different levels of detail that we can print with different methods. And obviously most people on this call are very familiar with that kind of technology but I just think that this is a nice little entry level piece a bit of Australiana um, that I like to bring along as a little show piece and thank you to Roma for for giving me this little gift one time so with that I think Kristen do we have Diana back online I think I can still see her having a few technical issues I don't see her um do you got any more interesting parts you can show <laughs> one more I actually have one more right here so this is um, so this is from a Victorian-based company, Titomic. Um, so Titomic, for those of you who may be aware of their work, maybe not, um, they have been using the cold spray, cold spray process or Titomic kinetic fusion to manufacture some of their parts. And what we have here, um, so I was doing some work with them at about a time when they were doing some really interesting stuff with uh, different layering of different metals, but for an, from an industrial perspective. So obviously after their process is complete, they need to do some heat treating of their parts. And so they were exploring, A, how they could do um, different material deposition in different layers. So we've got some copper, we've got some titanium as well. Um, but then also for the heat treatment, what, what steps could they take to heat treat different metals at different temperatures? Obviously this kind of part, very challenging. If you're gonna be heating up copper and titanium, they have different kind of um, temperature profiles and gradients for their heat treatment. Um, but yeah, just some really cool and some little test pieces and some little nice little takeaways that um, it was work being done here in industry in Australia um, by two pretty awesome companies. And with that, what I might recommend is if we're still having some issues bringing back Diana, Kristen, I think we have some great speakers actually in our other tracks right now um, for technology, people and economics. So I might recommend people jump across one of the other tracks yeah she's here we're just having trouble bringing her up on stage because she's not showing up um in the, in the it's a it's a technical issue for sure um mm. yeah i i think if, if people are interested in joining on a stage more than welcome to 
Um, or you can stick it out. We got 15 more minutes with Diana if we can bring her up. So um, I'm hoping we can do that. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any interesting parts to show handy. I don't think mm -hmm. that would anyone mix other than the tchotchkes you get at events. Um, my new printer that I just set up over the weekend is very exciting for me, but it's not very industrial. Um, <laughs> let's see. Let me see what I can do. Yeah. I've actually, I've got a question from Carol. Well, that's interesting. Thanks, Carol. So the angles of the Sydney Opera House is under 45 degrees, correct? So overhangs were not an issue. So yeah, so this was done. Um, so obviously just um, laser cut from the base plate. Um, so this was just printed, um, I guess, from, from this is your base to the top. The overhangs on this were not an issue at all for Roma. Um, just really cool. Love it. Different patterns. Um, some really delicate kind of like bone and bio, like biological structure in that little bit there as well, which I love. So, so we do, what we're going to do, I might put myself on mute and turn my camera off. Um, if we get Diana back, we'll bring her on up to the floor. If not, it's been a wonderful afternoon uh, moderating the industry track for you all. Um, thank you for your questions. Thanks for the insights from our speakers. So we had um, two Dianas actually. So we had Diana Hall. Um, from Active Armour. We had Vin Vinaya Manvatkar from, um, from uh, the universities in India. And we also had Diana Tartakowska, um, who hopefully we can get reconnected to talk a bit more about the European standards um, in relation to additive manufacturing for medical applications. Um, so yeah, just bear with us. I'll bring up another screen. So, and I can share with all of you, we will be returning um, in just over two hours. So we have a two hour networking break right now. We'll be returning in just over two hours. We have, uh, we're gonna kick it off with our uh, um, regional summary for Europe um, and um, a very full pack schedule for the next block. So if you do have time, if you can make it, definitely come back in two hours. Um, in the meantime, the networking hall on the main floor will be open. So go ahead and go back there and we'll, we'll see who all is there. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, Christy. <laughs>
just for your awareness, we're getting Diana to refresh a new browser and a new link. Hopefully she can join us shortly. So every when you closed out, it closed out. Oh, sorry. You hear me? I see me. Hey, wonderful. <laughs> so Diana and I were just uh, using different technology. So we were connecting via LinkedIn chat to bring oh. her back up on stage. Um, so Thank what I'm going to do is stop sharing. And what we might do is we're <laughs> I'm happy to run over. So. This session is finishing with a two hour gap. So what we might do is happy for you to restart where you would like to. Um, I think we were only one or two slides in and we can just run from there. So um, people on the call, like people online, they're welcome to stay and ask questions right through to the end or jump off whatever their preference is. But I think I'm um, happy to run through until you're done because there's no one else. Um, there's not another session starting for another couple of hours. So let's let's dive in. I'm so glad that we could get you reconnected. So uh, the question is, um, oh, the others are still there, so we can just go yes, ahead. Yes, we've got fifty-three people still on um, in the session, which is great. So I, um, we did, we did a crazy, to jump a crazy into regulation, <laughs> yeah. medical device regulation. Who wants to hear about this? <laughs> no, no. Okay. So, um, so I might get you to bring up your screen again. Let's see how we go. That was working we'll quite well. Try, we try. We try. Look, I got to we get a bit of show again. and tell in. I got some additive manufacturing part show and tell in. So I was quite. Yeah. All right, lovely. I'm going to turn my mic and camera off. Diana, welcome back. Glad to have you back. Um, over to you. Yeah. So thank you a lot. So I tried to continue the same slides as three minutes before or 20 minutes, 10 minutes before. So um, the point was uh, uh, where we, I don't know what you hear, probably not as much as I, I, as I was speaking about, but um, the point is uh, the 3D printing, it's a huge, it has a huge potential, of course, but uh, we know there's also a lot of challenges. Yeah, and there is a lot, really, really lot of challenges. Um, but at the end, it's more or less the same as a standard or the classical production manufacturing. Yes. Um, here we have uh, maybe some more uh, problems or challenges, let's say, because the uh, additive manufacturing uh, uh, um, machines, let's say, are a little bit smaller than the norm injection molding or ex uh, extrusion machine. Yeah? So, so it's not so easy in the classic way just to put the machine in the in the corner and say, ah, oh, I can do this. I can just make some some very very interesting um, medical devices. So this is this is the point uh, here, and um, of course this is this could be this could be one of question who is printing where is printing how is printed yeah uh, um, if all the assurance let's say um safety quality assurance uh, standards 
um, are also um, in lane, let's say, for this for the for the people who are working with this um, uh, with this technology. Um, I will say um, here it's a small part um, of. Um, uh, of, of, of small parts of a big challenge, yes, because we we have to we have to control the process. Yeah, if we are talking about the medical devices, uh, this is a very very special field of of, of industry, uh, and um, this is uh, like a, one of the most controlled uh, industry branches uh, after pharmacy, let's say. So, and I said. Um, Okay, so let's check this in real. How? What does it mean? What? What we can do, or what? What are the um, regulation? What we have already um, in in the world? So, so I just decided to do this in in Europe because uh, I just say hello from Berlin. Um, and I decided to bring you some information about the current uh, legislation issues, what we have on the European market. Yeah, it's not easy. It's really not easy. Since two years, everyone uh, who didn't have uh, gray hairs have a lot of them. Yeah, so um, because it's it's even even worse than FDA. Yeah? It's it's really really hard to say it, but it's. It's a true. So sometimes I'm just thinking um, that uh, when I'm talking about medical device uh, regulation in Europe, I'm just opening the Pandora box. Uh, not this with the jewelry, but this with the ancient in, uh, from the ancient time. So uh, we have um, sometimes more problems than than solution. So, but uh, to the regulation. So we have um, two years ago, more or less, uh, let's say 2021, we got. Uh, New regulation um, in uh, in uh, in the in Europe, yeah. It's called European Regulation on Medical Devices. Yeah, we waited um, since 2017 uh, from for this uh, regulation to get in force. We get a lot of time to be prepared, and of course, nobody is prepared. It's normal. It's usual. It's nothing special. So, um, but it means um, um, the, also that we have a lot of work. Yeah? So we have a, we got a shift, one year shift, let's say, um, to 2021 instead of 2020 because of a pandemic, uh, and even this one year was not not really enough. Yeah. So what does it mean we get a new regulation? It's um, before 2021, we got still this medical device directive. So now we have a regulation. This is a big difference, yeah? Because um, between, I don't know how many from you are uh, familiar with this um, regulatory part, but uh, if, you have a, if you have a regulation and, and directive, you have uh, two totally different ways uh, let's say to implement uh, a, a law on um, national uh, to national uh, level. So if you get the, di the directive, then you have to implement this first in your own national regulation. So it means you have time, more or less. Yeah? Of course, nobody has time, uh, got time, but but everyone have a lot of time. So, but the regulation, it's another in another story. So if the regulation is getting enforced and this second, all the uh, countries which get this regulation, let's say as a, as a mandatory regulation have, uh, have the start point. So it means on 26th of May, 2021, all European countries, I mean European in the meaning of the European Union countries, um, get the um, MDR regulation uh, get enforced and uh, it starts. So it means from this second, there was no excuse. Everyone, each uh, country for the European Union uh, had the same legislation, the, the same regulation. 
So um, it means at least this was leveled. But but um, as you see on the slide, it's not um, it was not enough. So it, the question is why we have the legislation, we have the regulation, we have one one law for everyone. Um, there are some countries, also Germany, uh, which said, uh, sorry, uh, our old regulation were better, um, were more assurance for the patients, let's say. Uh, so, we, so we need this to, to stay on the same level. This is possible because this is a regulation of, uh, of European Union. So the national and national uh, regulation can be um, can support this um, also in, in, in each country, let's say. So what, why I'm telling you this? Because this is very, very important uh, uh, detail. If you are getting to the market, to the European market now, so you don't uh, have to know only, or you don't, you ha you know already that you have the medical device regulation, but you have to check also all the national regulation and directives and guidelines and whatever. So all the supporting stuff. Why? Because the 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 law of the national level is more important in the in the in the second yeah in the in the moment you have to fulfill the requirements of the european union but also requirements all, on each country and they can differ uh, and they can differ it's not necessary that uh, the european uh, country um, have uh, the, some supporting uh, regulation it could be that some uh, country said it's enough mdr is perfect for us it's we we are very very happy with it and but there are, there are a lot of countries which said mm -mm, we need supporting stuff so and this is this must be checked yeah and this is not only for it go going on the market but also staying on the market um, in each country of european union so um this is one point. What about uh, medical device regulation? Some some very interesting points. There are only the few. There are not everything. There is not everything uh, written. The this um, medical device regulation has at 175 pages, written in English uh, or better said written in several languages and uh, translate to english and if you just um, know a few languages i can read this uh, the same regulation in three languages already you will you will check how many differences between languages um is inside so it means we have already um, the the base is already uh, maybe not not leveled for uh, every every country so what is inside inside there are a lot of definition in the beginning it's very good but it's still not enough yeah so you will see that there are a lot of uh, definition um, which are which should be inside of the medical regulation because otherwise we are uh, we we cannot work properly yeah because uh, even even such a let's say easy definition like a state of the art it's 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 very very bright definition maybe and uh, it's each auditor can interpret this a little bit others so there are some some points and this kind of uh, failures it's a, it's a lot in the medical device regulation so what we have also application field of course and uh, and we will find the, even the goal of the regulation more or less in between the sentence, of course, is of course the background for the regulation for the controlling of the process manufacturing just just the controlling of the of the um, the big 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 very bright process of medical device um, manufacturing at at the end. 
So um, the main idea is of, uh, or the main idea of uh, medical device regulation is the same as uh, by FDA or some other standards. The patient uh, must be safe, but here is not only a patient, but also the user and the third party must be safe. Yes, so, so they're they're a little bit brighter. So um, you have to do everything to reduce risk, to reduce harm, to reduce um, any possibility to to unsafety products to to make some yeah some some problems yeah with the, the, some problems coming uh, from the medical device and going to uh, be on on the patients and even even some some um let's say uh you have to take care that the patient are not um getting bad let's say very very generally so um the other points on the list oh i i just think always that the other points are only the tools just to fulfill the re uh, requirement um, of the no risk and uh, safety and good uh, and and efficiency uh, medical devices so because you the tools are um something like a properly quality management system risk management system uh, controlling stuff, yeah. So several several tools for controlling of manufacturing, uh, like validation, verification, like um, evaluation of of very 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 different um, stages in the life of the of the uh, medical device. So um, you have a lot of information. As I said, 175 pages, um, uh, very very. With, with with small letters yeah? so what we can find also is uh, classifying how to classify devices and uh, this is also very important uh, important point because otherwise we don't know um, where we are so for the classification of the medical devices based on MDR we have um, article 51 yeah, there is um there describes the product uh, classification but here you have to um know that there are several rules yeah but the one most important rule is um the manufacturer said what is the intended purpose of the medical device and if the manufacturer is saying the the purpose is a then it means is a and not b not c not d so um so according to the purpose you can just classify classify your uh, devices yeah uh, because you are just uh, looking what is the intended purpose what is the um, medical device for and what kind of risk it may be according to uh, this purpose and 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 uh, and device as use of this device for the patient. So we have the classification in three big groups: uh, class one, lowest risk potential; class two, A and B, with um, higher uh, risk potential and of course the class three it's a high high uh, uh risk class this is the, the highest class um for the for the uh, medical devices so the question is of course uh, who classify the uh, medical devices w where can i read it read it and who uh, where should i go just to get a it's a one, it's a two, it's a three. So um, this is according, as I said, to intended purpose and the classification is made by manufacturer. So the point is now, okay, um, it is important, it's not important. It's, it's um, at the end, um, the, the most important thing is just 
to look if your if your uh, medical device is in class one or higher. Yeah, because if you are if you are in the class um, one, so you can be lucky more or less because uh, as a manufacturer you don't have to in, involve um, notified body. So you just saying. Okay, this is a class one. My, uh, I check all the requirements. I check my uh, technical documentation, and according to this, what I've done, I can um, write the uh, conformity with the medical device regulation, and it is enough. So for the other classes up two, so two A, B, and three you need always notify body so it means you will get a more audits more checks and and um uh, you 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 are not so free person let's say but um regardless of uh, of the um risk class you have to fulfill a lot of a lot of uh, requirements so in the in the mdr we have general safety and performance requirements in the annex one is a 23 points um, where it's uh, written everything what you have to check or, uh, or you have to check your uh, medical devices if it's fulfilling this requirement yeah there are so, some requirements about the composition some requirements of manufacturing risk uh, or different different stuff labeling name udis and so on and so on so, so a lot of a lot of information so the same all the materials or all the not materials sorry so all the devices doesn't matter which class they must uh, get a very very detailed technical documentation yeah and the, that technical documentation it's not only just uh, writing oh i've done this I, I bought the material i've done this i produced this i manufactured this i i packed this and maybe sterilized this uh, and i sell it it's not enough you have to write uh, very detailed um, and with a lot of justification, mostly um, information about uh, design, about the manufacturing, about the validation, about the, all the steps you need to assure the safety of the um, products and, and the end of the of the patient. Yeah. So uh, you see, there are a lot of a lot of points. Uh, for all the classes uh, and uh, even if they are only the class one or uh, I mean the, only the class one but um, one point more in the MDR we have um, in between in the class one also some let's say uh, uh, subclasses this is one R one S and one M these classes are um for special um, properties of the material of, of the of the device of the product yeah uh, sterilization or reusable or uh or something with the measurements so for this parts of of this um let's say properties of the product you need also a little bit another another uh test or also some kind of uh let's say audit even if they are not if they are notified body it's not so really allowed to make an audit about your technical documentation and so on so be, because they are only um for the special the special uh, uh part like a sterilization for example so um if you see as it doesn't matter what we are doing, uh, what we are writing, we have to do everything just for product safety and uh, performance, you know, or just to assure that medical devices are safe, efficient, and effective. So um, the point, uh, one point more, the medical device regulation, it's written very generally. So there is a lot of stuff in between sentences. And a lot of uh, um, 
ideas, let's say, or or um, non-set um, sentences or ideas like um, you have to find out how to assure your safety. Yeah, it is too much just to to explain this in in uh, in each point, but. Um, you don't have to think about the MDR, MDR that there is written, for example, something about um, uh, quality management system that they will write. Please make your quality management system according to ISO 13485. No, you wouldn't find this just because um, this is a regulation. So uh, they give you they give you a, a lot of um, a lot of possibilities, a lot of points, a lot of requirements which are written, and they're um, waiting that the manufacturer uh, make own ideas, make uh, thoughts about how to fulfill how to fulfill these requirements. So um, what? Um, MDR is also uh, talking about, or maybe not one, well, sorry, not MDR exactly, but uh, on the website of the European Union, you have the MDR and also you have uh, uh, a lot of guidelines. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, sometimes I'm just saying that for each, each chapter in MDR, you will get two guidelines. Yeah. So for 10 pages, you have read 90, more or less. It's of course uh, not uh, not true, but sometimes you you think okay each week uh, we have some new guidelines and you have to read it. The problem is you have to read it because notify bodies uh, read um, the guidelines too, and uh, they check um, during the audits. Uh, let's say some some uh, some points from the guidelines if it, if you fulfill this because. Uh, yeah, because this is a one big book at the end. Yeah, so um, finding the way between the sentences is a is a very very interesting um, uh, way of spending free time. So, um, what is uh, about 3D printed products and, and MDR or medical devices? So this is, um, of course, the question, what kind of medical devices you are, uh, you are manufacturing? Are you manufacturing the devices? Maybe you are selling on these devices. Maybe you are making some accessory. Maybe you are making some component, yeah? manufacturing some component. Or you are just uh, manufacturing a medical device and some some bioprinting and then you you get a combination so this is very 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 um interesting subject let's say and it's not easy to solve yeah there's not really uh, one solution so for a lot of um, medical devices you have to to uh, divide these devices even in, in, in small parts, because maybe you have something from uh, which is, uh, however, uh, used uh, with the electricity or some some uh, fluids or some some bio stuff. Then you have to uh, divide this in each part then combine this again and just look what is the most important part. So complicated, yeah, we can make this very complicated. And the next um, question is, uh, who are you? Yeah, Are you manufacturer, are you supplier, are you vendor? So for each class of, of uh, let's say, um, uh, you can find you can find another, another solution or more, obligation or 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 um, you have to write a lot of documentation so if you are going in the path of uh, manufacturers um, unlucky you uh, you have to do a lot yeah so because the mdr it's it's a kind it's a it's a very nice from the mdr that they are uh, 
it's written at least what the obligation of manufacturers are. But you see, mostly it is in one article uh, this uh, written, but sometimes you have to just write, read also a lot of another stuff. Yeah? So uh, it's not about only risk management system, it's not only about quality management system, but this tool uh, are main points, main goals of the MDR. Why? Because um, it's not enough to have a quality management system in, in as a manufacturer. Quality management system, according to ISO 9001 or 13485, say, mm, yeah, this manufacturer has a lot of documentation and maybe this is properly written. Yeah, It's not enough today. So you have to make this risk management system. This is more more important than quality management system. Even they are combined, yeah? they are they're really um, work together. And um, for the rich, uh, for a rich for a risk management system, you have to take um, take a look in each process uh, according to your to your uh, medical devices what kind of risk do you have how influence how influence this risk your um at the end and uh, the safety of your uh, product and so and so on so a lot of a lot of stuff um we are not going here inside of this of each of each uh, point because there are a lot um but um for sure the manufacturer has, um, in the case of MDR, um, a lot of um, work to do, and uh, mostly the manufacturer are not prepared for this. Yeah, They're, this is too much. Yeah, because um, they don't even know all the standards. Yeah, it's, it's sometimes it changed, and so it means you need uh, in your organization you need. Uh, to have a group of people who is always up to date. Yeah? So this is um, exactly what the uh, MDR is um, um, which what, what MDR want from us. Um, and MDR, MDR, you will find this responsible person. Yeah, this is um, it's called responsible person, but it could be a team of people. Yeah, who are responsible for compliance. Yeah? So it means uh, that must be some people who has uh, a lot of knowledge about law and a lot of knowledge about technology and so on and so on. So this is not mostly not only one person. So, and in all of this obligation, we have also some um, some uh, voice of customer, yeah. Uh, just uh, we have the professional users, we have a patients, and uh, I, I think uh, I just jump one slide <laughs> too fast. So, but the professional user and the uh, and the uh, patient, they have more or less the same um, expectation. If you are just talking about the three D printed printed. Uh, Not sure if we have potentially run into some technical difficulties with Diana again. I think she's in a patchy spot uh, where she is with her internet connection, unfortunately. But I think she's gotten to, I guess, the the root of a lot of the uh, topics that she was wanting to cover in the presentation today. Um, oh, here we go. We've got Diana back. Not saying anything. Yeah, this is a <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Um, but I'm back. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> now that we've got you back, did we want to progress to a few questions? So uh, I just try to share. Sure. Sure, yes. Do you hear me? I'm back. Let's share. Um, okay. I just, I, 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 
I think I, I just moved to Canary Island. I spent last three months there and we have always internet there. But to the customer voice of customer so this is the voice of uh, uh, we have we need a, a special design we have we need a, some individual uh, solution we need a lot of a lot of um, very very specialized um, um, let's say unique designs and and uh, maybe also manufacturing or also components and so on and so on so it must be fast yeah so uh, the question is of course if the mdr uh, or um, any other regulation at the end uh, have a special requirement if we just say we are not we are not doing really the same or not the, our implants or our medical devices are better or 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 special. So if you're just looking in the text of the MDR and the requirements, you will not find anything special for the 3D printed medical devices. Uh, it's because the, this regulation must be very general. Yeah, it's it's not the um, um, it's not the case of the of the MDR to be a special for the 3D printed medical devices. It must be for all, for each class, for every possible manufacturing uh, way, for every possible um, um, medical device, let's say. So the one thing what you have to see is just uh, look which class, yeah, what, uh, what is my medical device? How can I, how can I, um, how can I just work with this? So it means what is a regulatory process for, for this risk class? Yeah. So um, this is um, the, the, the solution. What we have, of course, um the question is uh what is about the custom made uh, devices yeah this is a big discussion already um in the meaning of the of the mdr because um the mdr defined this this is very nice yeah from the from the european union that's at least this is defined yeah um, but it's um, but they built here a second sentence and the second sentence and the second point is just started a very big discussion which is still open. So uh, custom made device means any device specially made in accordance with a written prescription of any person authorized by national law. Yeah. So by virtual and personal professional qualification, which gives under the person responsibility specific design characteristic and it's intended for the sole use of particle patient exclusively to meet their individual condition and needs so it at the end written prescription somebody who knows what is prescribing why is prescribing also because this is uh, not uh, not solve in 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 the moment that somebody some let's say uh, uh authorized authorized person is prescribing i need this in this um device it must be justified yeah this is uh, another uh, point by by mdr if you are just doing something justify if you are not doing this justify too so exactly the same story and uh, third point one patient special needs and perfect description about this yeah? why why this are not another not mass produced mass produced um application so this is the the then okay for this uh, part we can say it's okay i understand i need to fulfill the requirements and um, i say only one sentence in between here is person authorized by national law think about this that it could be also different 
in uh, different uh, countries. Yeah, it could be good or worse. It depends yeah, on what we are looking for. So, but the second sentence, however, must produce a device which needs to be adapted to meet the specific requirements and the, of any professional user and devices which are mass produced by means of industrial manufacturing process in accordance with the written prescription of any authorized person shall not be considered to be custom made devices. This sentence and exactly this uh, question, um, what is industrial manufacturing process? started a very 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 big discussion yeah so uh, because it's not so clear so it depends what doesn't mean industrial manufacturing process is um, additive manufacturing industrial manufacturing process yes or no if yes then we have non custom made devices so but the question is how uh, who who can decide if it's uh, uh, industrial manufacturing process is or not in mdr you wouldn't find any any explanation yeah you wouldn't find a uh, definition from industrial manufacturing process there is no place for it um in the end, I read already, I suppose, everything what was uh, possible to read about uh, about this discussion. Um, there is um, the European Union wanted to, to give some, let's say, solution for this. There is um, even a um, written reply of the Re European Union Commission um which is uh, saying uh, sorry uh, yeah maybe it's not so clear just but but think about it's not only about the production method and exactly if we are just reading this uh, the, the mdr only this what is written and without thinking about or deeper thinking about what is industrial uh process is it industrial process, uh, it is additive manufacturing, industrial process or not, and then it's okay, yeah? But um, there are a lot of, uh, as I said, another discussion, um, how to interpret this. So the European Union get also a lot of guidelines or they write a lot of guidelines, they are called MDCGs documents. Yeah, and um, of course, then we got uh, one guidelines more, and um, I don't think that they the, the, uh, solved the problem. They even, uh, yeah, what I should say, they even make the problem worse, yeah, because they started to explain in the guidelines a lot of another uh, um, stuff, and we have another um, two new uh not really defined um names patient matched medical devices or the adaptable medical devices yeah so and but both of them both of these uh, both of this uh um papers let's say this reply or the mdcg this is only guidelines this is not the res uh, not the um, um legal um i'm sorry i just lost the word um uh, it's it's not bended yeah this is only the what we are thinking about but uh, uh, after answering in this way yeah, it could be that you are uh, unsure if you are uh, if you if uh, this uh, process you are or if uh, the manufacturing of some medical devices can be seen as a custom made or not. So at the end, if nobody knows, take a lawyer and go for the court of the European Union. Sorry, but this is the only only um, possible possibility to get this uh, question really solved yeah because the european union uh, court said mm, we see what is most important there are a lot of um another uh, examples um for 
for uh, some decision for the court and they say hmm, hmm, we have to see what is uh, important because not only production method is what it's um, mm, uh, uh, in the end um, the, the decision for the custom made or not custom made so um for the conformity assessment for 3D printing and 3D printed products, um, at the end, you have to, to collect a lot of information. Yeah? For 3D printed products, we know there is nothing special, but you have to, uh, to fulfill all the requirements. Yeah? So uh, check always what kind, which class, which risk class do you have. So check uh, what you what, what are the requirements. But the first of all, the general um, uh, safety um, and performance uh, requirements. This is this is what the, your um, medical device must fulfill. Yeah, um, it is very nice set uh, GSPRs. Yeah, look on the 23 points and just check, 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 check. Do I have or not? Uh, should I make some test or not? There is everything. There is everything uh, inside. There are chemical tests. There are uh, physiological tests. There are uh, labeling. There are name uh, UDIs and so on and so on. So traceability of the product. This is one of the most important thing for the MDR. So uh, it means uh, you, you, you need to collect all possible information from the beginning, from the idea till the end of the production. Yeah? And uh, it doesn't matter at the end if it's additive manufacturing or it's a classic manufacturing. These are the same steps. So be happy. You can just find uh, some examples for um, similar uh, products, let's say, which are which are made in a classical way. So um, for the three D printing, uh, also what is in also uh, very very important um, um, the printer. Yeah. So there are printers are uh, here machines in the meaning of the MDR. So you have to look in, in MDR, you wouldn't find anything about this, but uh, the MDR will tell you, uh, look, maybe you will find some harmonized, um, harmonized standards, harmonized um, guidelines, whatever, yeah, directive and so on. So you have to check this uh, also. Uh, if your printer, if your printer is a harmonized product in the meaning of this small amount of uh, general machinery directive of European Union. Uh, not so easy. Uh, for the quality assurance uh, of the process, yeah, this, this is uh, one, one, one step more. If you have manufacturing process in the MDR, uh, it's also written something like your all the steps your process must be validated, must be uh, safe. It must be sure that uh, during the process, uh, your medical devices uh, are um, or after the processing, your medical devices are still safety for for the patient. So um, the question is uh, always how this is like a just normal quality management, normal quality management system uh, standard. Yeah, it's saying everything very general, and you have uh, to find the way how to fulfill. So um, we know already that the quality assurance um, is in the medical devices mostly covered only with the third. ISO 13485, but some parts also maybe with a 9001, but it's not enough, yeah, because we have a special, special, uh, uh, special manufacturing method. So for each manufacturing, you we have some standards. So if you have a standard, you take the standards and you check 
uh, what, which part of the standards you can use to, um, let's say, uh, uh, assure your process, yeah? And uh, just you write everything down. So, um, of course, uh, qualification, very verification, validation. Those are more in, most important uh, points because all the process must be validated um, in a medical device industry. Uh, because you need always the the, the some um, some documentation that your process is is safe. I, I know this is only safe, 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 but there is uh, the all the regulation is about safety. Yeah? And uh, to look also for just, I always think left and right about another standards or which are maybe uh, necessary for materials, for um, production for uh, also for sterilization yeah for cleaning there's a lot of uh, about this so um just um trying to summarize this yeah it's it's very it's not easy yeah to summarize so you have an an, uh, an uh, medical device regulation not really special um uh, regulation directly written for the 3d printing so it means it's very general so it means you have to think um about your process about your 3d printing process as a process and try to find out from each from each sentence something what it's uh, necessary and uh, just try to explain with your own words, let's say, or with your own process, what could be uh, good for this uh, fulfilling the requirements of the MDR. Yeah? So um, it means uh, you need to assure, let's say, uh, your process to, to, to be, your quality must be, Mm, let's say uh, documented with a lot of documentation. All the process must be validated, as I said, and you need um, justification for a lot of steps. There is not a perfect list. You will not find a perfect list what uh, kind of documentation you need for uh, all the processes because uh, it's case to case, always the same. Yeah always case to case so um for assurance of of uh, safety exact again uh you need also a lot of information about the uh, medical device idea also for the materials uh, you used uh, everything what is possible to find about the raw materials yeah um Till the till the end, to the best till the monomers, yeah. Because if you are just working with with polymers, um, it's it's uh, yeah, it's possible to, just to find it. And also, um, we cannot forget one one very very important part of uh, of all this assurance, yeah. Because we are talking mostly about the processes, parts, materials, but you need um, assurance about your people, yeah, about the resource. Uh, the the people it means uh, you're you're not your customer, but your uh, your co-workers, yeah. All the involved people must be trained. So this is a quality management system um requirements uh, even for the 9001 so but this is uh, here um also one one uh, one point we cannot uh, we cannot uh, forget this yeah so and what we have more try to do your best <laughs> let's say 
and try to apply all the rules of MDR. Yeah, it's it's not easy. But uh, and the point is, uh, there is not a perfect solution. Yeah, so each time case to case, uh, each time very special um, parts of uh, MDR are for the each manufacturing process or each step uh, important. And uh, one thing what I didn't wrote here in the slide is also uh, the the question what happened after yeah after you bring you brings your your product on the market let's say or the product or your devices your medical devices or some let's say if it's a class three um it means a high risk class uh, implants for example uh, what happened to to your um, implants or what happened to the patients yeah so this information must be also collected yeah um earlier we didn't collect this and a lot of manufacturer has uh, until now very 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 uh big problems of collecting uh, enough information about the implants or enough uh, uh information about the medical devices now it must be collected, it must be evaluated, it's um, it's everything, it's everything what is needed for also for further uh, evaluation, yeah, or just to see if the if your uh, process are working properly. It's a traceability at the end and vigilance. Uh? Uh, vigilance it's not uh, not defined in MDR, but everyone knows what it's talking about. So um, this was an overview. I try to make this uh, yeah, in this few slide, slides, but I think um, the subject is so big that we can talk um, about this next five days and probably we will, we will find um, each time a gap uh, which must be filled. Uh, Thank you Thanks. a lot. No worries. Thanks, Diana. And uh, thank you for your perseverance with a few of those technical difficulties along the way. Um, I really, your your presentation obviously circled in on a lot of regulations and legislation and thoughts that are coming out around the governance and assurance, I guess, for the medical industry in Europe. And it's it's been quite insightful to understand, I guess, how strong the rules are, but also how, how broad they are um, and how it's like a complex and evolving, I guess, ecosystem, especially to stay within the guidelines as well. So thank you for sharing your insights on those. What we'll do, because we're obviously run over time,